you might need to get a second opinion on these. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies you should give another chance. For this list, we're looking specifically at movies that were either misunderstood or disregarded at the time of their release, and may warrant re-watches now that some time has passed. To be clear, we're not saying the general consensus on any of these is wrong, just that we might have been a little too hasty with our ultimate decision. Please, this is a mistake. Number 10, MacGruber. He's untouchable. Oh, I'll touch him, rookie. I'll touch him wherever I want. We get it. Some sketches flat out do not work as movies, and Saturday Night Live adaptations are no exception. However, if there was one that was primed for a big screen upgrade, it was undoubtedly MacGruber. A not-so-subtle spoof on the 80s series MacGyver, this Will Forte-created character has arguably transcended its already silly source of inspiration. However, reception to the feature was largely muted. It certainly was not the smash hit Universal was hoping for. And then we'll just, you know, see what happens. You ready? While many deriders called it smug and vulgar, others would say that's part of its charm. And for those who've been turned on to Forte by his part in The Last Man on Earth, this one might be worth revisiting as one of his first leading roles. You're lying. And you're a piece of shit. Number 9. Johnny Mnemonic You lied. Yeah. Hailing from cyberpunk pioneer science fiction writer William Gibson, Johnny Mnemonic is a mid-90s futuristic action romp that ironically not too many people remember. It was critically panned for its unfocused narrative and wooden acting. Double cheese anchovies? You are Mr. Smith. You are late. Right. Particularly from one Keanu Reeves, who's best known today for being the lead of another sci-fi series, The Matrix. Sometime after his career hit a bit of a lull, but the actual second decade of the 21st century saw the cultural resurrection of Reeves, popularly dubbed the keanu -sans. So anyone fond of this breathtaking human being ought to check out this forgotten gem. I told you I was in a hurry. I'm a dead man if I don't get this out of my head. Number 8. Nacho Libre In 2004, writer-director Jared Hess hit the big time with the timeless comedy Napoleon Dynamite. Since then, Hess has had difficulty replicating that success, as evidenced by the thoroughly underseen Gentleman Broncos. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing results. All I see is a bunch of organic waste. However, if there's one diamond in the rough of his, it has got to be Nacho Libre. Starring Jack Black as a Mexican monastery cook whose dreams of becoming a luchador conflict with his religious upbringing, this sports comedy received mixed reviews from critics and moviegoers, even if it became instantly quotable. Over time, however, it's fashioned itself to be something of an offbeat Wes Anderson movie, filled with quirky characters and creative dialogue. Say it with me one time. Nacho! Nacho! Number 7. Popeye Taking what's best known as a cartoon and turning it into live action is no easy feat. So the film version of Popeye faced an uphill climb. However, the feature film of the same name has tons of energy and physicality, and even qualifies as an unconventional musical of sorts. While it endured a mixed reception, with many deeming it to be comedically jarring, the level of effort put into the project cannot be denied from the production design to the ensemble. What's almost universally agreed upon is that Shelley Duvall was born to play Olive Oil, and Robin Williams is so good in one of his first big screen outings, it's worth a rewatch on that measure alone. Plus, fans of director Robert Altman can watch to discover some of his signature trademarks. The sale. And I yum what I yum what I yum and I yum what I yum and that's all that I yum cause I yum what I yum. Number six, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Hang on, this is gonna be bad. At this point, Jurassic Park might just be one of those franchises whose sequels never live up to the original. That said, many might feel this underappreciated sequel could actually be the best. Yes! Sure, there are some things wrong with it, like the extended finale on the streets of San Diego, or raptor combat by way of gymnastics, but it's not without its more thrilling moments either. For those of you who remember the practical dino effects fondly over the reliance on CGI they've used for the later installments, this one comes as close to the splendor of the original as you can get. It was already impossible to match a movie like Jurassic Park, so maybe cut it a break. We'll find a way. 
Number five, Jennifer's body. Let me explain some things to you. Besides, best friends don't keep secrets. Now, here's a movie that was simply a victim of being ahead of its time. Back in 2009, Megan Fox was largely thought of as the ditzy bit of eye candy headlining Michael Bay's Transformer series, synonymous with one single shot. Similarly, Diablo Cody had her fair share of haters too, who found her undeserving of a screenwriting Oscar for the supposedly overly quirky Juno. That ain't no etch sketch This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. So the two were easy targets when they teamed for the horror comedy Jennifer's Body. Mismarketed too, and subsequently rejected by the teenage boy audience looking for nothing but sexy thrills, the film has found a second life in recent years as a secret feminist parable, particularly in the wake of the Me Too movement. I go both ways. Number four, Hulk. Element's now active. Despite the massive success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we've never really gotten a totally solid Hulk movie. That said, we've never really gotten an outright awful one either. Case in point, 2003's Hulk. Coming out around the time that superhero movies were starting to take hold on moviegoers, Hulk landed with a relative thud for doing too much talking and not enough smashing. You and I have never had the chance to get to know each other properly. Well, it's because I don't want to get to know you. But now that we've been inundated with more than a few superhero outings that played it too close to the vest, one can appreciate Maestro Ang Lee's distinctive vision, bucking the trend of the traditional trappings in favor of a more comic-inspired approach. And while it was previously criticized for its lengthy runtime, contemporary superhero movie buffs know better. And indeed you shall die, and be reborn a hero of the kind that walked the earth long before the pale religions of civilization infected humanity's soul. Number three, The Village. And not afraid. The end. Depending on who you ask, M. Night Shyamalan's downturn in quality filmmaking is often cited as beginning with 2004's The Village. His movies being best known for their twist endings, the effectiveness of said twists tends to overshadow what led up to them. Without getting too in-depth in this otherwise non-spoilery list, we're not going to purport that the clincher in The Village is all too clever. Yes, I have risked. I hope I am always able to risk everything for the just and right cause. But take away that facet, and you might just have a quietly compelling period drama with a supernatural thriller element to spice things up. While it couldn't live up to the likes of Unbreakable or The Sixth Sense, it is better than some of Shyamalan's later efforts. Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. Number two, Dune. Soon they'll begin to fold space. Far off in the control rooms of Spice Gas. David Lynch movies are famously ambiguous and flat out weird, many requiring multiple viewings just to comprehend the meaning. Take, for instance, Lost Highway, which nearly made the list as well. How'd you get inside my house? You invited me. It is not my custom to go where I'm not wanted. But if there's one project of his that's considered too incomprehensible, it's Dune. We get it. Its long and slow nature calls for your utmost attention. But if you are up to the task, it just might be worthwhile. As readers of the source material will tell you, Frank Herbert's novel is a hefty tome and difficult to adapt, so the aspirations alone are worth admiring. And since its remake is helmed by Blade Runner 2049 director Denis Villeneuve, a match made in movie heaven, it might just be time to reevaluate Lynch's Black Sheep. The beginning is a very delicate time. We at Watch Mojo and we as a society have been revisiting our opinions on a lot of movies that were hated on by most people. <laughs> like the Star Wars prequels, for example. And I think it's cool that we're willing to give these movies another shot. So which movie do you think we should revisit? Let's try again with some honorable mentions and then we'll see what movie tops the list. Is there something here that interests you? This interests me. You did come for the Black Cauldron, didn't you? Good. Then Clivey? <laughs> no, I am not! I'm alive! I go on! I breathe! Look at me! You're damn right I'm frightened. It's natural. You don't know what's happening to you, but there's nothing to be frightened of. As long as you put your face in me. Thank you. For loving me. It's not to love. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Speed Racer Back in 2003, the Wachowskis left moviegoers with a bad taste in their mouths with some of the most disappointing sequels of all time in The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions. And the memory spans of moviegoers proved long-lasting, as their next project, a live-action adaptation of the Speed Racer franchise, bombed hugely. No way! No? Detractors cited an oversaturated use of CGI as being one of the greatest flaws. But honestly, what did you expect a faithful adaptation of the Japanese anime and manga character to be? At least it took a risk. And in an age where near-cartoonish, car-driven action movies are beloved in the likes of the later Fast and Furious sequels, it might be time to give this would-be hit its due. Lesson's over. See you at the finish line. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.